Uh, we're here. We're at Bayview Christian Center. We'd love to welcome everybody out. We'd like to thank you for joining us. Uh, today we are, we are celebrating our Christmas mar uh, miracle that uh, God gave us a Savior. Uh, the message may not be what you expected, but we hope that you enjoy it. Um, as we get started this morning, we'd like to just welcome everybody here. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for showing up online. Thank you for watching. Um, watching us uh, give today's message. But before we get started, I, I have a praise and hallelujah because this week uh, Baby Christian Center and Safe Savage teamed up to do a, a baptism at uh, Mr. and Mrs. J.P. Byers' house. That would be uh, Flora Gonzalez uh, Byers' <laughs> Mrs. Uh, and we, we'll be handing out some additional uh, uh, certificates this evening. But right now I'd like to call up uh, Floor Marie Gonzalez Byers. Marie. Come on. No, Marie. Maria. I thought you were French. <laughs> no. Thank you and Come welcome me. into No, I'm just kidding. I know. That's just jokes. That's just jokes. But we'd like to like to thank Floor for allowing us to be a part of not just her, her resurrection moment, but uh but really a moment of repentance and entering into the baptism of repentance and and really entering into a work. And that goes the same for, for Miss Mari and Mr. Roy, uh, Roy Cordell Smith. Uh, we'd like for y'all to come up. Don't, don't leave just yet. Um, yes, yes, yes. Y'all got to come get in the frame. I can't tell if y'all in the frame because I called my cameraman up here. Uh, get in the middle. But, but, but what I, yeah, come, come on, come on, come on, come on. Look, I'll bend over, y'all get behind me. Uh, but what I want to say to everyone out there is John the Baptist started baptizing people through water baptism. It is a baptism of repentance where we, where we turn our life toward God. And it's a work that we do. It's a choice that we make. And it's an important choice. And you should be aware of the choice that you're making. And, and we're just so thankful that, that through discipleship and, 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 and what God does and allows us to, to join in with Him doing in spreading His gospel, people find their way to God, even in such strange and, and crazy times. There's so many things going on out in the world today to see people renewing their their mind and 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 receiving a new heart and following the spirit of god seeing revival in the church in the way that we see it so many places right now despite the attacks of the enemy on this world is amazing and i just like to thank them for being obedient amen, amen? amen. thank y'all thank you give me love don't unwire me <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so we included that uh, today just because it's 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 special and it's something that it's it's something that is important and has value. And we're getting into the Christmas season. We're well into it. Some of y'all been in the Christmas season since the day after uh, Halloween. Um, Amen. Some people went straight back to next year's Halloween. Um, but whatever that is, you know, today's message. Is, is what will you wish? Because everybody makes Christmas wishes, even people who don't believe. Because we're, we're, we're taught so many things. As we prepare to celebrate Christmas, we, we are looking toward the greatest gift ever given, the birth of our Savior. So many of us have holiday wishes. We even offer best wishes to people we don't like and seasoned greetings to people we we, we don't talk to, but that one time during the year, um, we encourage our children to, to pray and to write a list for Santa. Just for the record, St. Nicholas was, was a Christian. So, um, But we encourage our, our kids to, to wish for things. And we, we have these wishes that we wish. And, and my question is, what will you wish? We have this extraordinary belief in, at this time of Christmas that wishes come true. We believe that our prayers are even heard differently during this time. 
Isaiah 7 and 14 foretold, Therefore the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And most people who, who even come from places that, that are not traditionally Christian know the name of Jesus. Sure. They know the, the name Emmanuel and what, what all of that brings and what it's supposed to be. Even people who don't believe know about Christmas. And we could get into a, a ton of things about where Christmas came from and do we celebrate it at His birth. Or we could just believe that we do it the way God intended, that it accidentally showed up right in a perfect place. So think about this. We celebrate Christmas at winter, which we call the final season. That's when His birth was. That's the final season, winter. And it happens at the beginning of winter every year. Yet we celebrate His death in spring where life is anew. Amen. Do, do you think that that's an accident or you think that's the design of God? We don't think about it in those terms. Fall back, spring forward. Fall back, spring forward. Which I vehemently disagree with. If we're going to invent time, we should stick to what we invented. Or at least if we're going to restrict ourselves by space and time, unlike the God that we serve, we could just leave it alone. I mean, I don't know. That's a whole other subject that has nothing to do with this message. But the construct of the end of the law and the season of winter and the beginning of the church and spring is something that weighs heavy on my heart. Um, just because I believe that there is a spiritual significance because with His death, we have a new birth. We are made anew. It's a... Uh, and you, you wonder why it's that way and, and, and you can get into all kinds of philosophical thoughts and discussions with yourself. But it just reminds us that we should be focused on God at this time and at all time. The seasons change in our lives, but we always have a wish. We always have a hope. We always have a desire. And today, what I'd like for the people that are in an earshot of my voice to think about is, what do you really wish? What will you wish? John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through Him. That, yeah, amen. But that might means we have to do something. What do we have to do? We have to make Jesus the Lord of our life. We have to confess with the mouth and believe in the heart. Our whole lives are about choices because God gave us free will. And that free will was intended for us to use to serve Him. But He left the choice to us. He will do anything within His Word for you and with you if you but seek Him. We all have the same gift from God, and yet so many of us feel like we're unsaved, unwanted, rejected. Some even embrace and see manifestations that others receive, blessings that others receive as proof that God doesn't like them, that as proof that God doesn't love them, as proof that, that somehow they are less than somebody else. And I'm going to say this. Don't look at other people's blessings because you don't see their pain. You don't see the struggle that they go through. All you see is the blessings. And we compare what blessings other people have to what we have. 
because all we see is what we what, what we desire to see and it's all on the outside the pain is on the inside the hurt is on the inside you might you might see that somebody is walking through a physical sickness or disease but you don't see what's on their heart and how they are dealing with the loss of a loved one how they are dealing with that sickness and that disease. You don't see the pain that someone's going through. You see, oh, he was out giggling and smiling. We watched Robin Williams for a lifetime entertain us. He had it all, or at least we thought. What he didn't have was peace of mind. What I hope he had was a relationship with God. Amen? We see so many things. This is the hardest time for many people. There are people that you know that will not be with the loved ones they so desire to be with. So many people who've experienced death during this season and will never see Christmas the same. So many people who will be absolutely alone during this time and it creates a different type of sadness than any other time during the year. And they all have wishes. The question is, what are they wishing for and what will you wish for? Will you wish that there would be peace on earth? We say it every year. But do we really want peace? Do we really do what it takes to make peace? And the Beatitudes what I call Jesus' first speech. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. Yet so many of us, when it doesn't go the way we want it to, make war. It, whether it's a war of words, a war of feelings, a war of thoughts. I know that I will have some kids and some parents at my house this, this, this holiday season. I also know that I won't have some kids and some parents at, at my house this season. Do I wish it was different? Yes. What am I doing to make it different? I don't know. But there are things that we wish, and what we wish should be offered to God for the things that He does, and should be worked on by us for the things that we can do. And we should always wish that we exemplify the love of God to our neighbor. Amen? Amen? Romans 10, 11 through 13 says, For the Scriptures say, Whoever believes in Him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew, Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Do you have salvation? Do you wish for salvation? Do you wish for the salvation of others around you? When people are looking at one another's blessings, are they wishing that those people would be blessed more greatly? Is it a selfless act what you're wishing? Are you wishing that you would draw nearer to God and uh, exemplify what it is that God desires of us? Are you reading your Bible to figure out what that is? Are you wishing for people to come into repentance? Are you wishing that all would be saved? Because the God that we serve, it is His desire that none should perish. That's right. He gave us all away, and it starts with the birth of Christ. And that's who we're supposed to be celebrating. Amen. John 4.4 4 says, Greater is he that is within me than he who's in the world. And if that's a true statement, and the world is mad at Christmas time, you should be greater than that. You should be better than that. You should offer love, support, prayer. Everybody has something different that they do as a Christmas tradition. But I say that at Christmas time, when we send these cards out, we buy them in big boxes. What I wish is that 
moving forward because I'm not good at it. But moving forward, what I would say is, as we send these Christmas cards out, I wish that we would tell people how we truly feel. I got a beautiful card from Chuck and Mandy this, this year. Um, Chuck and Mandy Lewis. It was amazing. It was, I, for me, it was unexpected. And I saw it. And it was just, I love you. Or we love you guys. What more could you ask for from someone is to be loved, especially from people that you know are trying to love you the way that God loves you. And we should simplify our message and say what we mean. If you're sending something to someone who you ha are, are holding in a place of unforgiveness, you should forgive them and you should tell them that you forgive them. Send a card, send a letter, send a text, make a phone call. We shouldn't hold ourselves back. We should always allow ourselves to love freely and allow God to deal with the consequences of you loving freely. Because whatever it is that you do in the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God, he will protect you. He is our protector. Amen? Amen. Let me say this. We have the opportunity to wish for some things. And we should know that it's a choice. Will you wish for life or death? We have choices to make every day. God gives us free will so that we could make those choices and sometimes we choose differently than we wish. Did you choose to do something different than you wish? Did you choose forgiveness or anger? <coughs> but I bet you wish for forgiveness. I bet you wish that you would, you would exude love, that you would represent love, that you would always want to forgive people immediately. But was that a choice that you made? Do we choose to trust or do we live in unbelief? We wish for trust, but do we do that? Faith or fear? We, everybody's got t-shirts. Faith over fear! Well, I was going to go, but I was scared. I just want to say that we choose things differently than we wish. And we need to understand that as we make a choice that's different from our wish, it is us that's doing it. It's your free will that's allowing you to act differently than you wish you would. That's a choice. I have a choice in the morning. Is it going to be a good day? Is it going to be a bad day? If I wake up thinking it's going to be a bad day, I guarantee it's going to be a bad day. I can't guarantee that it's going to be a good day just because I made a choice that it was going to be a good day. But when it started to become a bad day, I had an opportunity to make a choice to make it a good day. That's right. Say that again for the folks in the back. <laughs> there are things that happen to you all throughout the day. When you wake up in the morning, if you make a choice that it's going to be a great day, right. when a guy cuts you off in traffic, you have a choice at that moment. To keep it a good day or to let it become a bad day. When you get to work and your boss says something crazy to you and you're ready to say, I can't believe you did that, you have a choice that you can make. You have a choice all throughout. In every moment of every day, you have the potential to make a choice for good. And we spend our time wishing that we would have behaved better when we had a choice that we could have made to behave better. I know I do. Um, you know, mercy or revenge. Think about that. When somebody wrongs you, is your first thought, let me give you the grace that God gave me. Or is your first thought, well, watch this. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. I, let me say this for the folks online. Most people in the room know this about me. 
when I pass this stuff on, it is literally because this is what God has showed me about me. So if you feel like this message is getting a little too personal for you, just know this. It's about, it's about what God's doing with me and in my life. It's not about something that I may supernaturally know about you. God's not a respecter of persons. This is what he's doing with me. And if, 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 if he's trying to get you to do it with you, uh, you should listen. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and the question is always this. Do you choose to do what you wish to do? And we should always choose what we had wished. So 1 Peter 4 and 12 says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery trials you're going through as if something strange was happening to you. I know I read it differently than it looks. But, dear friends, quit being surprised at all that's being thrown at you as if it's just you. How many of us get into a place of self where we think, I can't believe this is happening to me? I only saw two hands. Y'all are lying. Oh, there we go. There's, there's all the church people telling the truth. Amen, amen. But the reality is, it happens. And it's going to happen. And there's nothing you can do to stop it from happening. There is a choice to be made when it happens, though. Will you handle it with prayer? Will you handle it the way that you wish to? Or will you choose to be in a place of self-indulgence? Oh, woe is me. Will you be in a place of... So some people have what, what they call false humility. And, and I'm not saying that this is the best example of it. Uh, you had to decide that for yourself. But, but I, have, I, I have a friend who, who acts very differently now. And he's the one that explained this to me. And I will not call him out by name. But what he said was, I used to be a guy that I would tell you, oh, my hips messed up. My, my toes been bothering me and my car's wrecked and I got a bad uh, I got a bad carburetor on my bike and 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 this and that and the other thing and it's oh it's so bad and a lot but the Lord will provide <laughs> and what he realized is that he was looking for some self-indulgent sympathy in his struggle it wasn't really about the Lord. He was just trying to show that he trusted the Lord with all these things that he was complaining about. And I'm not saying you shouldn't complain. I'm not saying you shouldn't, you shouldn't say what's, what's going on with you because how else are you going to get prayer if you don't tell nobody? Right. You've got to tell people what's going on with you. But you can't be in some place of false humility. Like I know because I knew me for 40 years before I knew Jesus. I know what happens when I'm in charge of me. It ain't good. So when I say it's because of Jesus, just know this. It's because of Jesus. That's not false humility. I just know who I was and who I am. When you know who you are in Christ and you know what Christ did for you and does for you and will do for you because he's not because God's not a respecter of persons when I see somebody get blessed out there I don't care that they got blessed I just know that it's not just for them it's for me too That's right. I don't care what it is I don't care what it is if you see somebody get blessed that's available to you 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 and 2 says but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be, will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, dot, 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 dot. All of those things. Y'all know anybody like that? Y'all seen anything like that on TV? You ever acted like that? Don't say nothing. Don't raise your hands. <laughs> I'm just saying, 
that all of these things, go back one slide. When you look at all of those things, people be, will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient, ungrateful, unholy. Think about this one thing. All of those things are things that are available for you to love more than God. All of those things are things that can come between you and God. And don't you wish that nothing would be between you and God? Amen. Then choose God. Choose God. Choose the life abundantly that we receive through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That's our choice. And we claim that it's our wish. And then we do things like that. We don't do them on purpose, but we find ourselves in that spot. I used to be a lover of motorcycles more than a lover of God. Now I love God. I still love motorcycles, but they have a different spot in my life behind Christ. I love my wife in the event that me and my wife have something going on. We both know that God comes before the other and the other right behind God. The Word of God says a cord of three strands is not easily broken. Me and my wife could be broken. You and your spouse could be broken without God. But when you put God as that third cord in your, in your relationship, in your life, in your marriage, in your relationship with your children, in, in your relationship with the people that you work with, that's not easily broken. The reason that me and my wife are successful is no matter what we do between ourselves, and by we, I mean most of the time me, do wrong, we always find God at the center of our marriage. And as long as you find God at the center of your situation and you are willing to repent, you are willing to be thankful for what God does, you will always find your way back into that strong cord of three strands. Amen. 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 That's what I wish and it's what I choose. I choose when I fail my wife. A week ago today, I got a, uh, we left out of here and I got a, a, a jalapeno seed in, in, in between my, my tooth and gum and my gum swole up and I was in pain. I chose not to tell my wife that that was going on. I told her, hey, I had a jalapeno seed and then went on about my business. What I didn't choose to tell her was that, hey, it swole up and it feels like somebody just stabbed me in the head with an ice pick. And we went on and we went on and it got worse and it got worse and I still ain't went to the dentist and I did da, 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 all my choices. And then something happened, and I reacted. I chose to react differently than I wished to act because I felt weak. I felt in pain. I felt separated from my wish with an inability to make a choice, and I lashed out, and I smarted off. And it took three more hours of me smarting off before I even told her what was wrong with me. That's choosing differently than you wish. That's my example. This is my example. I don't want people to feel like, because I'm up here and they're out there, that I am immune to the things that every person on this planet faces. It's not the way it works. Pray for your ministers. Pray for your pastors. Pray for the people in your church. Pray for the people out of your church. Pray for every person on God's planet, on God's creation. If you're not praying for every person on this planet, you're not praying for every person that God wants prayed for. Amen. Amen? So know this. I can just as easily get outside of what I wish to do and be in a choice to do something opposite of what I wish as anybody else. And the question is, what will you wish for? Once you wish for it, will you choose that wish? And I can tell you, once your tooth swell, swells up real good, chances are you lose your desire to make 
a wishful choice. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But God, let me just say that, but God brought us back together from my failures and shortcomings. Um, praise God. Well, we, 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 we have a relationship centered around God. Eventually, I'm going to find my way back into repentance and, 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 and ask God, please forgive me and ask my wife to forgive me. And we're going to pray together. That's my, that's my wish and my choice. I always choose to come back and pray with my wife. Do you pray with your spouse? Do you pray with your loved ones? Do you, when, you're, when you're, your uncle's cousin's nephew's brother's niece's uh, kid calls you and says, hey, I got hurt on the playground, do you pray with them on the phone? You don't have to answer that. I'm just saying, don't pass up your opportunity to pray for and with people. I used to be a guy that people would say, hey, hey, will you pray for, for, for this or that or the other? I say, yeah, I'll be praying for you. And I walk off. Not no more. Now, if you ask me for prayer, you might not be prepared to stand there and listen to it. Because I'm going to put my hands on you right now. And if it's for your niece or your nephew or your, your, your sister or your brother-in-law, you need to be prepared you need to be prepared to stand in for that person because we're going to pray for them right now and you're going to stand in. You're going to stand in the gap for that person. And that's a choice that I make based on a wish that I used to have. I wish that and I choose that. So if the people around you are acting selfish, know this. It's exactly what the Bible tells us will happen. <laughs> we will see everything, everywhere that the Bible says and be surprised, even though it's clearly written in the Bible that that's the way it's going to be. I, I, I used to spend my whole life surprised that I can't believe they did that. Well, why wouldn't they do that? Of course they would, because the Bible said they would. I can't believe I did that. I don't know why I was surprised. Looking back, it seemed like just something I would do. 2 Peter 3 and 9 says, The Lord is not slow about His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not willing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. You know, you're praying and you're praying and it's not coming and you're taking it back and you're giving it back to God. I don't know why you got to be so slow, Lord. I'm about to lose everything. I'm about to, about to lose, lose, lose. Some people say I'm about to lose my religion. No, you're fixing to act like a donkey is what you're fixing to do. And it's a choice that you made. I, I, I know this because I've acted like a donkey before. A pure D donkey, as a matter of fact. Will you wish for repentance for yourself and those around you? Will you wish that the entire world will repent? What will you wish? After you wish it, will you choose it? Because wishing is prayer. Wishing is thought. Wishing is spiritual. Choices are actions. Choices takes place in the physical space. Wishes exist spiritually. Find a way to choose what you wish or choose to do what you wish to do. 2 Peter 3.10 says, though, But the, lay, the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be discovered. So the place I want you to concentrate is but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. So does death. And what I want to know is if it was the rapture I'm getting ahead of my own message but when death comes like a thief will you have said all you needed to say? Will you have done all you needed to do? That's the question. When the day comes, what will you wish you had said or done? Will you wish you had told them you love them? 
Will you wish that you told them about God's love for them? Will you wish that you said you were sorry? Will you wish that you had forgiven them? Will you wish that they knew God? Will you wish that you had given them a phone call more often? Will you wish that you had passed by just to say hi? Will you wish that you had loved them the way that God loves you? What will you wish? 1 Corinthians 10 and and 13 says this, No temptation has overcome, overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be te tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Now, some people would ask why I put this scripture in after that other one. Uh, and I'm going to tell you this, it, because it's important. Everything that happens to you happens to mankind. But today's message is about wishing and choosing. And God is faithful. He will not let your wishes be tempted beyond what your choices can bear. You see what I did there? Go back to it. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted. Meaning, against your wishes, what your choices can bear. So, when things happen, and, and, and I, wish I, I wish I exemplified love. I wish I exemplified peace. I wish I exemplified joy. No matter what this thing is, no matter how bad that guy made you mad when he cut you off and shot the finger, you don't have to pull out your pistol and point it at him. You can pray for them. You can be love. You can make the choice to do exactly what you wish you would do because God won't allow you to be tempted past it. Amen? Amen. That's a good word. I'm preaching better than y'all responded. <laughs> but but that's, my, that's my thought. So, and again, these are things that I'm guilty of. This is not a message that, that was necessarily completely intended for you people. What you mean, you people? All of y'all. This is a message that God put on my heart while he was teaching me things about me because I make choices that are... I, I tell people all the time, my sole wish is that I would love better every single day. But I make choices during a lot of those days that don't match up to my wish. Because I do things, fleshly things, that, that are not what my spirit would have me do. That are not what my wishes would dictate. Make choices. Make choices based on what you wish. Because there's nobody who doesn't wish they were the best person that they could be. And the only way to be the best person you could be is to be just like Jesus because he was perfect. I, I don't think that's, that's, that's mind-blowing news, but I'm going to say this. Unless you walk like Jesus, Amen. your wishes are being dictated by your choices. And we have the power to get over them. So repent. If you have been tempted... His promises are true. Will you wish you spent more time with loved ones? Will you wish you cared less about the struggles of this world? Will you wish that you believed more in what the Word of God says? Think about this. There are people in this room that have moved, self-included, that have moved to, I believe that where the Word of God says, lay hand on the sick, and they will recover. I believe they'll recover. I didn't always believe that. Amen. So, now that I believe that, there's some other stuff in there that, 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 that I hadn't got to where it's just old hat. So, think about this. There are things in the Bible that you believe today that you didn't always believe. There are things in the Bible that you will believe later in life that you don't believe today. 
But it's through a constant renewing of the mind. It's through gaining God's wisdom and not leaning on our own understanding. I wish for all of God's wisdom. But I understand that if God gives me too much of it at one time, my head will explode or they'll put me in a funny farm. One, one of the two. I mean, I, I know that because if I look at all that God has shown me over my journey from the day I got born again to today, had I learned that at one time, A, I wouldn't have known how to use any of it. And B, it would have just been too much. I would have been overwhelmed and overcome. But if you're hungry, study. If you're not hungry, get you an appetizer. Keep reading the Word of God. Keep leaning on His wisdom. A wise man seeks counsel. A wise person always looks for fellowship and counsel and understanding of what God's promises are. And that's where we should always be moving towards. That's what we all say we wish for. I just, I just wish I was more grounded in the Word. Well, what are you doing? What, what choices are you making to become more grounded in the Word? James 5, 19 and 20 says, My brothers and sisters, if any, anyone among you strays from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that the one who has turned a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Are you really reaching out to the people that you know that need God the most? Because we all, we all got that, that person, right? I used to have a friend in, in, in an office that had made the statement that he had retired from church. He made it to, he made it to his confirmation he was going to retire. And he'll, he'll come out of retirement to go into the Hall of Fame and become an announcer uh, once he has kids. It'll be time to come back out of retirement. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's not the way it worked. Matter of fact, I specifically look for scripture that, that, that supports that. And other than the prodigal son, there's nothing that, uh, nothing that supports what you're saying. And there's no, nothing to make me think that there's not a possibility that, that, that you might perish between now and then. You may have some salvation insurance or something like that. I, 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 I don't know. But so to deal with this guy... Whom I love greatly. I made a point that my, my Iron Sharpens Iron group, when I put out, a, put out a verse, I would read it out loud as I was sending the text. I got another, another one that, that Don Dixon out of Ardmore, Oklahoma, sends me every day. When it would come in, I'd read that. I'd make him listen to it. And one day he finally told me about, I don't know, three or four months into, into that job. He said, if I sit with you long enough, I'm going to know the whole Bible, ain't I? I said, God willing. And it is his will. And he said, I, I appreciate that. Maybe I'm not doing it right, but, but I do appreciate the fact that you're trying to make me know what God has to say. Amen? Amen. That's, for me, I think that's what we should be doing. It's trying to bring people back. But as, as I ask you to think about and ponder what, what you truly wish, I would like to give you the scriptures for me that I wish. My wish is to, that I would live out Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. And it says, As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, Forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, to which you indeed you were called into one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. With gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. 
And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Amen. That's what I like to do. That's, what, that's my wish. That's my wish. And, and, and I, I expect it to be my choice. I have an expectation that, that my wish and my choice will line up. Romans 15 and 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope that you will consider all of the possibilities that you can wish for and the opportunities that you have to make wishes come true, to make choices that line up with your wishes. You can surely forgive those who have wronged you. You can ask for forgiveness for what you have done and failed to do. You can repent and encourage others into repentance. Will you get to the end of your life or the lives of loved ones or to the rapture of the church and wish that you had, you had more time? There is no time like the moment you are in. I encourage each and every one of you to tell, them, to tell the people around you you love them, to spread the gospel, fulfill the wishes that you can on your own power, and pray for the wishes that are in God's hands. Amen? Amen. And this so concludes today's message, and I hope that everybody learned something or has a desire to to line up their, their choices with their wishes. And I hope that everybody took a moment to think about what they truly wish for their eternity and for the eternity of the people around them. Amen? Amen. Thank you for joining. Please uh, like, share, and duplicate, and multiply, and tag people in this message. Uh, family, friends, people you don't like, I don't care who you send it to. Send it by plane, train, email. It, does, it, it doesn't matter. We, we pray that you would, if you've been blessed by this, that you would bless others with it. Amen? Amen. Uh, you, can, you can find the audio of this message on BayviewCC.org. Uh, Facebook, Facebook Live, you can see at Bayview Christian Center. And also YouTube video, you can find. Uh, today's will be posted sometime tonight. Uh, Bayview Christian Center is where you would find that. Today, Save Savage Sunday Service, we're going to give out the rest of these certificates. Today at Save Savage Sunday Service, we will be at Hitchcock Post at 2 p.m. Um, don't be in such a hurry to get there at 2 p.m. that you hurt somebody or hurt yourself on the, on the road. Just know this, that we, uh, we typically start 2.15, 2.30, 2.35. I mean, it's, it's not that formal. What I'm saying is, just get there if you can, and we pray that you would be blessed when you get there. Um, Wednesday night, Charlie Shidey is, is making, uh, making real, real progress with some of us who don't understand Revelation. He is facilitating a Chuck Missler study in the book of Revelations, and it is in-depth. And if there's something you don't know about Revelation, it will, it's, it's very eye-opening. Uh, and we pray that you'll join us, consider joining us Wednesday. Um, Thursday night at JP and Floors. Is this the last week of the year? Are y'all going to do next week too? All right. So JP and Floor at their house. Uh, this Thursday night, uh, call JP. The, the number is 713-423-5898. Uh, if you want to join that Bible study, it's a home sale group, and it's been very, very good. Uh, they are studying Andrew Womack, and, and it's a very good... Additionally, um, that's where we was baptizing people last week. And if you need to get baptized and you show up over there, I think somebody might turn on the heater in the pool and let you get dunked. All right? Amen? Amen. Yeah. If you don't want it to be too cold, you might want to let them know the day before Thursday. Amen? Thank y'all for joining us. Oh, hold on. Did you finish it? I just want to say this. If you're listening, On the Grind Jesse, Sharon Newberry Fernandez, um, um, and Mary 
Day Day Coleman, we're fixing to stand in the gap for you guys and pray for you guys for, for healing. Amen? Amen? What do you guys stand? Oh. Stand up and raise your hand. Shut off TV. We love y'all and we hope to see you here soon. Amen? Amen. Amen. <coughs>